Hey, Parlay Pete, I got a problem. What's the problem? I have nothing for culture hour. We could spitball. I mean, and we didn't really go into great detail. I mean, we could continue with basketball. Uh, no, I want I want I want to talk some bullshit now. Uh hold on one second. Let, let me pull up what we do have. Bro, I'm looking, I'm that telling you. Stuff. The topics are sports heavy. Mm-hmm. They are. Uh, I don't even like look into like non-sports topics. I tell you what. Well, here's one that I did send in our personal messages. Okay. And at least while we're doing that, we can kind of, you know, improv into the next one. But we can start off. It's not super duper sexy, but it's the Chloe Bailey uh, album sales. Hey, let's uh, talk about that. Yeah. 10K week one. Um, now this is, let me go to her Instagram real quick so I can see how many followers she has. Um, Chloe Bailey. Uh, she's got six million followers. Uh, um, she bought them. Sure. Well, the album sales tell us that because you know, either that or maybe everybody just sexualizes her and likes her because she's got a fat ass. I don't know, you know, but those are very sweetie esque numbers. And like, we know sweetie is like makes bad music, right? But like, she actually is a chick that I guess can sing. I don't listen to her, but like, I guess she can sing. I mean, Beyonce co-signed, right? So she can sing. I'm guessing. Well, Beyonce, here, here's, here's the thing, right? She comes from like Nickelodeon or whatever. And she's from Atlanta too. She's an Atlanta uh, baby. Well, she probably should have tried to make it through the industry through Atlanta and not through Nickelodeon mm-hmm. because. Unfortunately, like most kid stars, they don't let you grow up. We didn't let Bow Wow grow up when he tried to make real music. But he still went platinum. You know why? Because the shit was fire. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bow Wow, even teenage Bow Wow was like from, obviously I'm used to Bow Wow, Wow, Yippee Yo, Yippee Yay, Where Are My Dogs At? Now, he also had the Snoop Dogg co-sign too. Like Death Row was co-signing this motherfucker, basically. Well, Death Row gave him to So So Death because they're like, hey man, he trying to rap like this. We can't do nothing with that. You know, Jermaine Dupri, that's Chris Cross. He, he he can make the kid friendly stuff. But I think that her celebrity was just bigger than than her music. And a lot, there's a great number of celebrities who are more famous than they are talented. And that's most, what she is. Most people are now. And for her. Nobody, you remember when uh Hannah Montana, uh, Miley Cyrus went mm-hmm. through her phase where she went from Hannah Montana to Miley Cyrus mm-hmm. and she was doing all that reckless stuff, dying her hair, getting tattoos, doing shit. And people were like, What is working, wrong? working with Mike Will made it, yeah, but she was she was like growing up, or mm-hmm. like when when Bieber went from baby, 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 oh, to wrecking Lambos with little twist. And getting sleeved up, and it's like, bro, what is he doing? Like, nigga, you're tripping. Chloe Bailey has not leaned into I'm gonna be reckless to show that I'm an adult. You know, even Rihanna, she came in under my umbrella, Ella. You know, we thought she was just cute, just hit cute though. little pop singer. Yeah, but that was a hit. It, y- yes, we you thought know, she was just umbrellas like her. Would some still say that? I mean, it's, maybe it's not her biggest record, but that's like. One of their biggest records. Still. Well, being where you are today, if you heard if you heard Umbrella to like today, that's her. She just she's just debuting. Would you expect the anti album? No. Exactly. Because she, she's super duper pop, like at that, like she's strictly pop. Right, but then but be, but, but then she grew up and she found her own voice. I think Chloe Bailey is finding her own voice. But unfortunately, she's more popular than she is talented. So I ain't nobody listening to that shit. Well, and that was her first album, too. I mean, I didn't know that she had she I know that her and her sister had done one as a Chloe, hey, whatever they're called. I don't know the Bailey, whatever they're called. They had something, but that was her first solo. And 10,000 units, though, bro, that's a waste of time. Scary. Yeah, that's scary. You got six million followers and you only got. Now, this is in the day and age of streaming. That was not traditional pure album sales. That was everything combined. So, uh, 
Well, well, that sounds like a couple hundred people were listening to your shit. Were you introduced to Chloe Bailey, the singer, or Chloe Bailey, the 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 Instagram? As a person, the Instagram. But overall, the first thing I remember is the one song that her and her sister have, because so many women used to use it on their reels. That, but it, that's her and her sister's song. I met Chloe Bailey on Instagram. So that's where I know her at, and that's where she exists to me. Sorry, like I, I didn't meet you as a singer, and not to say that you're not a talented singer. But what I saw was the Beyonce, the Beyonce people saying that Beyonce's fans should have supported her more. Beyonce should have supported her more. It's not Beyonce's job. Beyonce heard to the album Newell's mid. She wrote the wave, and then the wave was over, and who cares? Right. And and I'm looking at it because I had to go to her Instagram. She's got a movie out too right now. And it's just kind of like uh it looks like who's in this movie? Me and you. I might as well be, right? Praise the movie out now on Peacock. And it's got her, Drewski, Quavo, uh, some other people, Crystal Renee, I don't know who that is, and then Mac Wilds. i the name sounds familiar, but I don't know who he is either. But in grants, it, it's a peacock exclusive, but Ain't nobody it, watching. It sounds like you're getting quite a bit of pub to a degree. And I don't know, you know, the only news we hear about is how bad the record sales are. Uh, hey, which interesting development while I bring in the Quavo thing. You know, Quavo does his honcho day thing, right? Uh-huh. At, uh, Burke Mar, where he went. And it's so funny because I'm looking at it. It's hosted by him, of course. And the guests are Gucci Man, Ryan 2K, Chad Ochocinco, Taylor Rooks, and then there's two Atlanta Falcons listed, and then it says, and many more. Who do you think those two Atlanta Falcons are? Well, thinking about our roster, we don't have anybody that anybody that people really want to meet. Uh, put it this way. the Who is supposed to probably be the best player on the team is one of them. And then the other one is who is in the most important position. Grady Jarrett and Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter and Kyle Pitts. They're not celebrities. These guys shitted on Matt Ryan. And we're not going to get into this, but you know I had to have my Matt Ryan reference to come in. We are all here to do... They would never have invited Matt to do this. Um, and it's funny because if he's a glacier boy and all this other stuff, you would think Matty Ice, that's like a perfect like thing to like kind of bring into it. All that hate, but now everybody's showing this support to Desmond Rare. I hope he doesn't fall flat on his face. I really hope he proves me wrong. But nonetheless, doing I'm a movie with Quavo and you're not selling records. I'm rooting against Desmond Ritter. Um, honestly, I, I I'm not going to root against him, bro. I actually, like, when we come in, like, when you're here, when we're going to games in September, I want them to win. Like, I want them to win. I just have this expectation that I figure I know what's going to happen. So, I hope he proves me wrong. I, I, want, quarterback. I want Arthur to keep his job and us to go 2-15. and 15. I just don't know if it happens. <laughs> I want us to be able to get Drake I, now. Actually, I tell you what. He will get one more year probably just because this is our first year with cap. But now they've honestly done a sol- such a solid job of like getting solid pieces all the way. Like one in seven I, they actually have had a, you know what? This is my true opinion. B plus off season before even the draft so far, it's been a B plus off season. Like this has been a B plus this. They've had a very solid off season. The Jeff Okuda uh, pickup, um, was found dead in his jail cell, covered in bed. Nope. Well, we Somebody that. found dead in their de- jail cell, covered in bed bugs. Right. Yeah, well. <laughs> but um, I, I, my hope is that you know the defense is going to improve. We know it is. Like you just know it is. I I have a gut feeling we're going to be at least middle of the pack this year. I really do. I think that we'll rank between that twelve and that seventeen. I think that that's about where we're going to be. I really do. And we already have a run game. 
So I just don't see us kind of failing unless he's like really bad. Like, I don't know if he's really bad though. I just don't think he's good enough to where we need to be sticking with him. Yeah. That's how I felt. I felt that he's not good enough for us not to offer Lamar Jackson a contract. If we're trying to win a Super Bowl, right? Because that's what this is about, isn't it? Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that that sticking with him is a I want to win the Super Bowl type thing. You know, I thought I have, I found a, a topic and then I lost it on Instagram. I didn't save it. Thoughts on um. On the on the Od Obel Odell Beckham Jr. contract, good for him. He took the probably the best deal he was going to get, fifteen guaranteed, three and escalators to make it a one year eighteen. I don't think anyone was going to give him that. Um, I think that he could have had something that was more closer to ten, and then it could have escalated to eighteen. But to get fifteen guaranteed and you haven't played football in a year, and then even the year before, prior to that and the year before that. It's not like you were a thousand yard receiver in either of those years. He made out very well. Then it's kind of a good fit uh, in terms of a team that really needed a wide receiver, got one, assuming that he can be as good as he was the last time we did see him play with a competent quarterback. Then, yeah, it works. But naturally, then the question comes in. The thought is, is that, and I think you had echoed it in the group, and we kind of all knew it once he signed. Clearly, Lamar is coming back. Lamar is going to gamble one more year. And he's going to sign it eventually. He's going to sign it, and he's going to play with them for one more year. And then they could do whatever they do, whether they win the division and go, you know, 12-5 and five or something or whatever that number is. Let's say that that is what it is. And they lose in the AFC Championship game. Then Lamar is going to just command even more money. And more than likely, unless they franchise him again, which very rarely happens that second time around, but it could – he probably is just going to say, fuck you guys after this year anyways. And then who knows? Maybe the Falcons are back in that sweepstakes. I don't know. Maybe he'll stay healthy. I don't know. But that could be the case that where he just retries next year. But clearly they made it seem as if he's the one that told Odell to come. So that tells me that he's going to play. Yep. Uh, oh, I think I sent this to a group. I, I thought it was a pretty funny uh, 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 little thread. Give me your thoughts on it. Eight signs you are a losing male. Oh, man. I did. Mas I went through that. <laughs> you masturbate every day. You let everyone disrespect you. You cannot control your disrespect. You don't work out. You never go outside. Always playing video games. You watch porn. You don't respect parents. You chase girls. Drop a 100 if you reach this last slide. It shows that you're a shark, the 1% who actually finished what they start. If you're serious about changing your life, then you must follow. I'm not going to say this guy's name because I think he's, he's a cornball. So what's up with these guys who are trying to define masculinity and tell – I don't even know, bro, like <laughs> – even like the Andrew Tate's, the Kevin Samuels of the world, the, the two who, who who made a fortune off of it, uh, I've consumed their content. I can agree with some. I can agree. I can disagree with other parts of it. I understand that there is an, a quote unquote attack on masculinity. I'm not saying that that attack is unwarranted because traditional masculinity has caused some issues in our society that need to be addressed. And kind of what we talked about with the NBA uh, mental health conversation. Sometimes we think that pendulum may have swung too far to where it's just like, oh, so hold on, I just can't be a man and be like, damn, she got a fat ass. Well, how do you think she feels about you thinking she has a fat ass? I, I, I really wasn't thinking about that. Like, I was just saying her ass is fat. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm going to police your thoughts too. But, like, how, how do you think I feel that she doesn't like that I like that she has a fat ass, huh? I'm not, not you. It's her ass that clearly is the fucking uh it, this whole conversation revolves around her ass but so but it doesn't my, matter what you think because it's about her ass not you but so my thoughts matter how she feels about how you feel about her ass well her ass shouldn't be so fat to make me think the way i'm thinking or maybe you should just not fucking be looking at her ass how about that 
Well, she shouldn't walk around in short shorts and, and have it in my face. She can wear whatever she wants, just like you can wear what you want. Nobody questions what you wear, sir. <laughs> and, 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 but th that's how these, these conversations end up going in general. We live in such an imperfect society where nobody's going to always be happy, but we all know what we can and cannot do because uh, – Twitter you know, tells us what we can and can't do. I don't want to throw a wrench into it, but uh, anything that's a liberal type of thing, like if you disagree, bro, you're done. You're cooked. You cannot disagree with something. Like you can't. You cannot uh, fundamentally do that because then you got the issue. It's not that, damn, this is how I feel. And whether I'm right or wrong, I, my opinion is my opinion. No, it's a, no, you're just wrong. Like there is no... How crazy of a position is it to be in to where if your lifestyle is a certain way, you cannot be wrong? Is that not kind of what that is? Well, give me a I don't where that's not correct. Well, did you see the Megan Rapino and Sue Bird? Uh yes, what they uh they're opposing the trans ban. For athletes, right? For athletes, yeah. And I, I am not one to say that that if you are trans, you're you're look, if that's what you want to do, I could give a fuck. I don't care. I it's not something that I identify with, it's not something that I've put a lot of time and effort into researching to a point that I will say right or wrong because uh, I don't know, bro. Like, I don't know what's going on in your head. I don't have, I don't feel that way. I don't, ex I don't have your experience. So I, I'll say that to say, look, nah, whatever you do, you do have at it. If you're happy, I'm happy. I don't really give a damn, but to have retired athletes say, no, we should allow genetically born men to participate in sports against genetically born women when our entire life has been men's sports and women's sports because of the physical advantages or the physical differences that men and women have. I don't really sit right with me. I'm with you. I, uh, I think I think it's and ridiculous. hold on, let me finish. It, it's not that I say that trans trans women shouldn't be allowed to play sports with cis women. I just don't want to hear from you old heads. Let's talk to the women who are playing the sports now, whose salaries are tied to this, right? Whose scholarships are tied to this. The ones who have something to lose. Their spots. Yes. I want to hear from them and how they feel. Megan Rapino, you've retired. You're washed. You're now the voice of the LGBTQ plus uh, sports community. Sue Bird, you're retired. You're sitting on ESPN shitting on the college uh, basketball game with Diana Taurasi and doing CarMax commercials with Steph with your four rings. And one of your four rings looks like my uh, my rubber ring that I wear to work every day. <laughs> like, that's what you're doing. But I didn't see you... Either one of you, because both of them are, are lesbian women. They're not trans, but they're lesbian women. I didn't see them trying out for Team USA, men's Team USA. Hey, we the girls and the guys, we should have one, one national team. One national basketball team, one national soccer team. They didn't say that. So for me, if you're not advocating for just one team, best man, best woman, makes the roster... Don't come here and say, hey, trans women take over cis women's sports because we're all the same, because we're all women. Shut your retired ass up. Hey, and then remember, too, guys, that the United States is not the only world. Um, this is not the only place in the world. Like, all right, let's okay it then. All right, now it's okay. So now LeBron at age 11 becomes a trans woman. Makes it to the WNBA as the top player ever in college women's history. Why would he lose money? Well, not a player in the WNBA, so now LeBron can't. The LeBron woman can't play in the Olympics because the, the world's not going to fucking okay it. Like, I mean, what are we? And then now it becomes a diplomatic issue amongst the world because now it's like, well, 
it's that's a woman. Like, well, is that not what this is? Like, it, this is the women's Olympics team. Like, what's wrong with that? Like, and then we start getting a roster full of that, and then the real women are actually fucking pissed because no, 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 no. Probably Pete, the cis women. Yeah, let me. Oh, cis women are because there is no such thing. A woman is a real woman. So anyone that identifies one is a real one, right? So the cis women uh, are now being replaced with non-cis women. And it's changing the dynamics of women's sports as we know it. And certainly we know that it wouldn't work vice versa in terms of a trans woman or a trans man uh, trying out for basketball because they're going to, we know exactly what's going to happen there. So we can cut. Right. Well, probably doesn't make the team. So I just. Kaylin Clark can ball, but Kaylin Clark is not, it's not competing in the ACC men's division. Like, you know what I mean? Brandon like, Miller, the kid from Alabama. Yeah. Scoot Henderson, Scoot Henderson will give Caitlin Clark buckets. Yeah. Will women Yama? Yeah. And. I know from my end, I know from your end, because we have these conversations privately. It's not an anti-trans conversation. It isn't. We don't really care. And when we say we don't care, I don't want people to think we don't care about trans people. I don't care about the decision that they make. They yeah, can bro. make that decision if that's, that's their, if that's their prerogative goal, by all means, do it. But yeah, bro, if you want to be trans, if you, I'm going to be honest with you. Most of the decisions that my friends make or people who I don't know make, I could give a flying fuck about because they don't affect me. Right. It ultimately has no effect towards you. I mean, maybe some people will be like, well, that's selfish, right? Like some people can look at it that it's weird, bro. That's how people try and flip conversations to where it's just like, well, you should care about this because this is affecting other people around you. Even if you don't directly know somebody that goes through it, you should give a fuck more about it because for the greater good of humanity and, and, and people being treated wrong. Right. Like, like people will try and make flip it into something like that. Like that happens all the time with this stuff. One of the biggest uh, disagreements my mom and I have is when we start talking about topics and I go, I don't really care. And she goes, well, you should care. And I go, well, it doesn't affect me. And she goes, yeah, but it affects other people. And I go, yes, it does. But I go, mom, you don't care. You fake care. You care because society says you're supposed to care about this right now. But guess what? Somebody just somebody just died and it's not on the news and you don't care about it. Right. And she goes, no, I, I do care about it because it happened. No, 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 you don't care. I'm like, what 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 is changing in your life right now? What are you going to change about your life? based on this death that happened that you're unaware of nothing it's okay to say that you don't care about things that don't affect you that you can't affect it doesn't mean that you're dismissive of it it doesn't mean that large large scale you don't care I'll give you another story my wife is walking our lovely young daughter down the steps she trips on the bottom step and she like barrel rolls. She falls in a way that she protects her daughter. Daughter's fine. Daughter like cries out of shock, not out of pain, right? But wife is scraped up. I come home. Wife tells me the story. I see my daughter in her arms, damn near asleep. So obviously she's okay. But I start laughing. Because <laughs> it's fucking funny. <laughs> Your clumsy ass Phil walking down the steps. Right. And then she goes, that's not funny. Our daughter could have gotten really hurt. And I go, and if she did, I wouldn't be laughing. But because she didn't, this is hilarious. <laughs> you clumsy as hell. You fell walking down the steps. Right. So I, I hate when people, and, and the liberals do it a lot, they get on their moral high horse. Like, they get to arguing about well, theoretically, you well, well, let's talk about in what reality. Is. Don't judge me for my thoughts. Judge me for my actions. All right. Let's talk about what it is. I've been watching this show. Uh, have you watched the show Designated Survivor? Mm-mm. 
Uh, if you're in the government conspiracies, it's pretty good. ABC had it for the first two seasons, and then it, Netflix took over the last season. Uh, I knocked out the first 20 ish episodes of season one in like two days. Um, There's 20 episodes in a, in one season? It was 2016 to 2019, 40 minute shows, but it was on ABC. It was on, it was on cable. So. It fit that it fits that more. Kind of like a 2020 type thing, or what what is it? Um, everybody pretty much everybody in, in the government dies except for the two designated survivors. So this guy who's the uh HUD secretary has to become president and rebuild the government. And there was a and they specifically made sure that he was the HUD secretary because they thought they'll be able to put somebody else into play to be the president because they didn't think he could That's handle it. fiction. Yeah, very oh. fiction. Okay. But it's good watch. But throughout the entire show, as he's becoming president and, and getting his feet wet and figuring it out, he's pushing like all these great liberal agendas. And I hit up one of my friends. I go, I wish I had the bandwidth to write a political show that was conservative. <laughs> Because you, you think about all these political shows that we watch, they're so ideological and liberal. And I'm not against all liberal values. Like, he, he had, like, a a gun control approach that made a lot of sense. And I go, okay, yeah, that, increased background checks. Yeah, I can get with that. I I don't have a problem with background checks. I just, just don't tell me I can't buy a gun. And we're good. Yeah. Um, I'm not trying to ban it altogether. No. Yeah. You know, I, I can say I don't understand why someone would need an AR-15, but me not understanding it doesn't mean I don't think you should be allowed to have it if you meet the qualifications of getting one. Well, there's that, and then there's are with the people that currently have them. Are we going to grandfather them in? Well, how does that work? Do you hunt them down and take it back? Then, if you take it back, what do you just give them the face value of what it is? Almost like an insurance adjuster coming in and telling you how much your car is worth. How does that work? I mean, there's so many different layers to that conversation in it, right? But I get what you're saying in general, just in terms of liberal approaches that certainly I think we can all agree on. Because like I told you, I, I know it may, a lot of people may think that I lean a little bit more conservative. I, I don't identify with any of it. I, I, I think that I just kind of take a look, see, and I see what, not only benefits me, but what do I think in general would be best for everyone? And that's kind of how I make my approach on stuff. Certainly I come first in my family, like things that I know will affect me directly, but like. You're not voting against the business. I, exactly. I'm not doing that. But even in the case of our previous election, even the what, yeah, that was obviously a business rooted decision. But I think in general, based on what we've seen that, We've got uh, a decision that was made even more so, too, for what probably was really best for the nation. And it not just be a business-rooted thing, too. This is really what was going to be better for the nation. But, you know, what do we know? We don't know anything. I'm actually working on booking us another guest right now. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you, I had one Mr. CS2 actually okay. messaged me he's back in town oh really yeah uh he messaged me yesterday i told him i said when are we getting back to work he's like bet i just got back uh today he said uh he was gonna be out a little bit but then that um he's pretty much he's gonna be here this all season he said he's i mean he's gonna be out there too but like he's gonna be here to where we could get it set you so just, if we, if we want to set it up to be the live thing, we could do that, but we need to, uh, I need to get that set in stone with him for the day, the date of it. That way I know he's here and then it, he's good to go. Well, we for, do a live one, or if he's, even if he's doing it like this and he's, and he, and he's here in Georgia himself, like regardless, just getting it set up is the only thing. You just, you but just he's going to be here a majority of the summer outside of when he's out there league hey look here man i i'm with it i'm definitely with it would love to make it happen uh 
Because, yeah, shit. The whole NBA season has happened. Um, I'd love to get him on at some point during the playoffs, too, honestly. I mean, that would be great. Take on. Yeah. Honestly, within the next two months, like April, May, before the finals, though. Yeah. yeah, Or he could be the finals. Yes. I don't know. Like, it just depends. Like, I don't. I, I don't think he's going to any games. Give me a reason to come up north. You know, I look forward to it. Um, you know, it's funny. I, and I mean to ask him this sometimes. I'll be like, bro, who's your league best friend? I know who his mentors are, but I'm like, bro, who's your league best friend? Like, who's – like, if LeBron, Melo, Wade, and CP3 are the banana – like, who – because I'll be thinking to myself, I'm like, bro, who do you hang out with in the league? I don't ever really see him hang out with anyone in the league. And so it's like – I want to, but these are questions that I'd even ask even on it. Like, it's like, who's your best friend in the league? What did it feel like when they drafted Darius Garland, a guy who plays similar to you and is your size? Yeah. Um, I will be up there. This will be after the wedding, but May thirty first, A and B's having a career a career fair. Is that Memorial Day weekend? It is right after. It's the Wednesday after Memorial Day weekend. Okay. Uh, I'll be up there for that because um, I think that it will be in my best interest as someone who's about to transition careers. Why not go to an A and B career fair and see if I can meet somebody cool who may want to offer me a job? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, big art. But now uh, I just hit up our, our good friend Kyle to see if she would like to join us to uh, talk about like you know we start talking about like liberal shit. I'm like you know what we have a friend who's a flaming lib. You don't mean right now, do you? Hell no. Okay, just in general. All right, cool. No, bro, I gotta finish. It's ten thirty. I got okay. homework to do. I mean, for like a a full on show. Yeah, I mean, uh, and she's always been somebody I've wanted to see. Uh, you know, sink my teeth into in regards to that type of conversation. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. I, I have. I've always. Uh, have y'all really talked politics like that? No, but here's the thing. And uh, but, you know, you know, I think that everybody has this uh, preconceived notion of what type of person I am, like from that perspective. And I don't know if they want to base it off of if you've been to my parents' house. You're like, okay, well, he grew up okay. Um, and that he probably feels this type of way. But like, see, my mom is I, I grew up Democrat. I mean, that's that is what my family was. Like, once I became an adult and I had to make the decisions outside of voting for Obama for his second term, because that was my first ever election I ever voted in. Naturally, I was gonna vote Obama. That it was gonna be tough not to do that, regardless. I mean, I hell, I didn't even have a realistically, I didn't even have a, a political side. I just knew who I liked seeing in office and it was him and he's black. So like, yeah, I was going to vote President Obama. You are you are a lot less conservative than people think you are. Yes, exactly. I, everything that I do conservative wise, there are values that certainly I agree with conservative, but like everything that I do conservative wise, it's certainly it's way more on the side of business than it is anything else. Because I, I know about business law. I know about that stuff because I have to know about it. Because if I don't, I'll get left in the dust or I'll get fucked tax wise because I don't pay attention to these loopholes and stuff. Like I need to know this stuff. Like No, bro, you're a, you're a fiscal conservative and that makes sense. So sometimes that that leads you towards candidates that some people other people would have an issue with. But what what gets me about so much liberal conversation, and I was having a conversation with a friend about this, I think earlier today or maybe yesterday, is I don't want to hear about what you think you would do or in a in a, in a perfect world, what's going to happen. Dog, tell me what you're actually going to do. You know? I hate to quote Kanye for a second time today, but especially because of the hot water he still uh, lives in these days. But... I mean, he said it best, and I, and I know I've said it on this podcast, you know, within the last three, four years that we've been doing it. Having money isn't everything, but not having it is. And a lot of people don't realize that if you get put in that fucked up position, bro, you are not going to care about any of this stuff. Because that's typically the people that don't vote are the people that really don't care because they're in such a fucked up position to where 
I don't even have enough time to give a fuck about this because I need to get to work on time. I need to figure out how I'm going to get there. I need to figure out how these kids are going to eat this food. I need to figure out how my light bill is going to get paid. I'm so poor. I'm still going to be poor no matter who wins. In such a fucked up position. Like that, these are the things that those people care about. So it's like, yeah, you can come and talk to me. And that's why if, if somebody says, yeah, we're going to put a ton of money into uh, middle America with all these farms and stuff, we're going to c- cut you guys a ton of breaks because they do get a lot. A lot of stuff actually, th- there are a lot of laws that are set up to where if you do it correctly, if you're educated enough, um, this guy, you just got to him. Julian just called me. Um, oh, yeah, he's in Atlanta tonight. Yeah, I know. And then he just sent me a text. Interesting. Um, when I move to Cartersville, I will have a farm. Do you have you had any type of background in it? Enough. We had some cows back in the day. I'm not look here. My farm is going to be about, you know, giving back and having some natural stuff for the house, for the family. I mean, we're we're going to put a couple of um we're going to have a raised garden in the backyard. Uh hopefully hopefully this summer start uh working on raising some, some crops, but you know, we get some goat. Maybe get a little heifer. Yeah. Steer out there, you know. Well, yeah, no, we're gonna have a little, we're gonna have a little livestock out out there, you know. And I understand how, bro, bro, Rick Ross ain't got cows because he cares about 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 having fresh meat. He's got them because he's ignorantly rich. And there are great tax breaks for those who uh, have livestock, and so you can turn your estate into a farm. He's ignorantly rich. Like I don't even know if he's wealthy. But like he's ignorantly rich. A lot of wing stops. And checkers. <laughs> and niggas like checkers. Niggas like wings. <laughs> That's what I respect about Rick Ross. Is he said, What do I like to spend my money on? I'm gonna buy into that. Right. Wings and fries, cheeseburgers, and hot dogs. Cheap. Well, yeah, check cheap, cheap. Cheap, cheap. Well, Wingstop's expensive as fuck because literally- Wing, Wingstop is up there with uh five guys. You know that's upscale fast food, and it's weird because they're not on. I've had some damn good Wingstop, and I know that that sounds blasphemous in Atlanta because there's just so many Wingstops. But like, I actually when Wingstop is on point, Wingstop's very good. They got them sugary ass fries. There's, they clearly are putting like sugar on those fries. Hey, they got they got they got they got high end fries. The fries are fantastic, bro. Um, and the wings are good too if they're cooked correctly. Then they used to have a flavor when back in Morehouse. Me and Justice would go to the one on uh, South Atlanta Road, and they had a, it was called Cloud Nine Wings or Smoke Nine, rather. They were like, um, what's the best way to describe them? They were like a barbecue smoked wing that was fried, but like in like this tangy sauce. It wasn't a barbecue wing. I don't even know how to describe it. It was so fucking good. If you look it up, bro, they stopped. It was a limited wing, but boy, one of the best wings I've ever had. It was really, really good. But uh, yeah, he, Rick Ross is, Ross is smart though. I mean, he's, and, and, and once you've made it to a certain level, bro, you can start getting in with people that just know the tricks in the trade of everything. And a lot of this stuff comes down to, do you have a bomb-ass CPA and a bomb-ass business attorney? Because if you do, it's going to be really hard to lose, especially if you know how to just make money to begin with. And I, I got to figure a little bit of that out. I still need to get my money really back up. But like uh, like I told you, Cloud9, I was speaking of because I said Smoke9 Wings, Cloud9, uh, the smoke shop that's here, it's here and in Florida. I know the owner because I met him at the Falcons game and his wife is a business attorney. And even in our brief conversation there, we went to, uh, where did we go? Uh, catch out there in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And I went with them and got uh, mold you here for sushi. Cause they're just cool. I just like hanging out and they like hanging out with me. It's cool or whatever. Falcons fans too. So like very easy for us to just kind of get along, but even just the brief conversation that we have about that stuff, um, 
you know, there's like little tax stuff that I didn't even know about. I was like, are you serious that I could have been making money off of this for all this time? And I'm like, is there a uh, statute of limitations on this? Like, can I go back and like change it? Because I can say that like X amount of felons have worked for me and I get a tax break off that. I make money off of hiring felons. Like a lot of people probably don't know that, that you can hire felons. And if you hire felons, that there's a tax break for hiring felons that you get a kickback. Wow. From I mean, that, that that's good to know because if I take this risk on this human being who may, who may cause, who I may end up training and then having to fire or may quit and I got to rehire someone else. If I'm going to take this, this professional risk on somebody, the government will, will then give me a little tax break so that we will <sighs> incentivize companies to hire felons. And that's just a small thing though. Like, yeah. you know, and, and and in some cases, I guess it just depends, like uh, like what your contract says, like with some of the people that I work with, they won't allow us to hire felons because they ultimately want to hire who we hire. So like I can't hire felons in those situations. But there are other ones that that is not a qualification for the applicants that we hire, that they have to have, that they have to be able to pass a background check or a drug screening for that matter. Like there are like so many different things. So it's just like for me. There are more loopholes than just that, too, that are out here. But it's just if you're not educated enough or educated enough on it or knowing people within the know, people that do it on a larger scale than you, and you're willing to listen and just, like, understand what it is that they have to say. Like, because, like, I'm, I knew that they were paid, bro, when I was sitting down there and I'm talking to them. I'm just like, all right. I'm like, y'all are – you start talking about you bought a fucking mansion from a rapper – down here and like you own your shit like you own it like you bought it cash i'm like bro i'm sitting up stuck on buying cars cash like that's my i don't even own a house like you know what i mean like like little shit like that i'm like bro let me listen to what they have to say and so like i think that that's a that's a big part of it too though just when it comes to political in the political space knowing what is better from that perspective because there are so many different ways that people can make money and not do anything to necessarily make that money. You like know, you're doing what you were going to do, but you could be making money off of it. You hear it all the time. Like, Hey, making your first meal is the hardest meal to make. And talking to a mentor, like he, he really like broke it down to me. Why the first one is the hardest one. Because he goes after, I mean, you make the first one, but when you make the first one, you have discretionary income to do so much more stuff than you normally don't have because, Oh, everything's paid off. So I got this much money to play with, whether yeah. it's, whether I hit or I lose, I have this much money to play with. And when I find that low risk thing here, I can dump 200 here to maybe bring back only 50. But bro, I just I just made fifty. Exactly, and if you're not, if you're patient and you know like uh, I'm straight, like there's enough that can happen to where even if this goes wrong, I'm not really gonna be in a bind, or it takes longer than it needs to take. Then that's when you're in, like, bro. I mean, that is making money in your sleep, right? Like that. Yeah. That's what that is, and so like I've got you know, like I mean, I know some millionaires for sure, and even. My company itself, I'm not a millionaire, obviously. Uh, now, my dad might be, right? Like, just from a pure network type situation, absolutely my dad is. But, like, you know, that doesn't mean he's got a million dollars just sitting in his bank account, right? But, like, now he could if he wanted, I guess. But, like, uh, but at the same time, like, I know some dudes that got it liquid, like, to have a million liquid or whatever. And, like, using those people to your advantage is key too, because they know something that you don't know. And then more importantly, they can help you, especially if you know what the fuck you're talking about, they can help you. Oh, like, you can help you. Like, like you met one of these people and I'll give him a shout out just cause he listens to the podcast. But honestly, my boy Briggs, like Briggs is like, Briggs is one of the best dudes I know, bro. Like I ain't never met 
a nigga. I mean, you're older than me too, technically, and and I consider you like a brother. Bro, well. we're the same age. We're the same. We're the same age, though. Yeah, he's like older than me, though. Like older, older. And I said, he's like what Briggs is like, maybe five or six years older than me. But Briggs is like an older brother to me, for real, because that is somebody that I know will always like, like can really, for real, like man, he can really help, like. That's a good dude too. Like he's a good dude, but like that dude knows. Like he knows, you know, and he know that. Like I know too. But there are sometimes that you need to have like people, bro, that can help you. And he's one of those people that I could easily fall back on it always. That I know will help me, and he knows that I have that return for him. Like if I needed it, like you know. I, I don't think I have had a sober conversation with Jay Briggs. And that's and it's not a knock on either one of us. It's just the the environments that we're I mean, and then where we maybe are. Yeah, like, like we're usually around each other at night after 11, 11 p.m. Yeah, we we just I was just with him two days ago. We watched. We went to the brewery. We walked to the brewery down the street from here. Wild leap. Which next time you're here, you need you need to come and check this brewery out. But um, uh, they're gonna start serving food. They said they but they said that shit wouldn't come until October. I was like, God damn. But um, so about starts in September. They tripping. Yeah, they are. I was like, man, that's too long. But real quick about Jay Briggs is every time I'm around him, I get smarter on something. Yeah. Just, just, and it's not even him like, hey, young bucks, let me, let me just drop some knowledge on you. Nah, niggas just be talking. Be talking and just drops a gym and you go, I was trying to have a shallow conversation right now. Yeah. But, but yeah, man, it's, one thing you said about and he's uh, an avid listener of the podcast too. By the way. Shout out to Jay Briggs. Like, I appreciate you listening. We 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 love we love Briggs. your we love your support from a distance, but more importantly, we love the support. I'll say I love the support in person when you tell me some bullshit we said on the pod or some shit you fuck with like on the pod, and I see you like in person. You say it, respect. But um, we're about to wrap up because now we're just riffing here. Yeah. But the, the the nice thing about the old heads is when they put you on game that you've never thought about, like For nothing, sure. stuff that you don't even that they 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 like just talk to you about so casually. And again, it's usually not flexing; it's them talking about their life and them you sitting there with your eyes wide open. Hey, I don't know shit. Tell me something. Like I had another guy, another mentor, talk to me about some stuff about one of his friends ran into a bond and didn't like the interest rate that the bank was going to offer him for like a, a nice size loan. He was like, well, I got it liquid. Here's, here's the interest rate I'll charge you. And it was, was like, like, okay, buy, like a house or something. And, and the, the collateral was the house. And, and see, but see, that's a perfect way of doing it. If you can do it, if you know somebody that can do that, you set it up that way. Because even for me, right, for the where I'm sitting at recording, right, I can buy this. I'm in a position where I could do it. I can put down the down payment. I have that. I can do that. You do that, but my credit might be fucked up to where I'm going to get a fucked up interest rate or they might just decline me altogether. Who knows? But if I know somebody that can get approved, they can just switch that shit over the next day. You know what I mean? It could get it could get switched over, but I need to have that down payment money, right? Like to do it. And then, you know, I don't have any collateral, but the collateral is just the fact that I have the cash and all you're doing is switching it over. You're doing me a favor is what you're doing. And, so, and, and it, it, it turns into instead of us feeding the banks, we're going to feed each other. Exactly. And when he told me that story, I go. Where I'm, I've been lost because, and it goes, it speaks to one of the biggest problems in the black community of the crabs in the barrel thing is you rather send somebody to the bank than if you got it, take it. And maybe the collateral isn't a house because it's not that much money. The collateral is the car. People, people, one thing I noticed, and it's something that I had to get over. People are afraid to ask questions and for help. Like if you are just vocal and you're very upfront about what your intentions are and what it is that you want to do and you're able to talk to people, 
that in itself can open up so many doors for you because you're not sitting in this situation where there's uncertainty or I don't know, or having to go through other people when it could be sitting around you this entire time. Like you don't even know like what it is that you can get accomplished. And I guess that that goes back to even one of the things I guess Morehouse tried to push out on us in general and something that to a degree, I guess you kind of knew, but like, obviously the whole your network is your network type thing, right? Like uh, who you know and who you're around, like, like, like that means more than anything, which is very true. Like it's, it's very true. And so, um, so, so funny you say all of that. Uh, Cause successful people, they want to brag. And they want to say, oh, yeah, boy, I helped him out right there. Because most of those people have large, fragile egos, which is what got them there. Yeah. So you being someone that they may trust, and you, if you're not asking for a handout, you're just asking for a conversation, asking for advice, they'll help you. As someone who's been married for 11 months almost to the day, it was hard for me at first to go to other married men or divorced men to ask for marriage advice because you don't want people to know that you need help managing a situation within your marriage. But then you go, oh, well, if I am so prideful that I don't have problems, no, nah, we're good. Well, you end up like them divorced motherfuckers over there. Yeah. And the old heads be ready to give you advice. Oh, yeah, when she do this, yeah, that's normal. Do that, do this, do that. And it's been one of the best things ever. Shit, me and Joel have gotten so much closer now that I mean, he's been living married for a while. I am married. We can have different types of conversations about dealing with our women and how we deal with that or... Shit, me and you, we have conversations about dealing with the mother of our child. Like, you've put me on so much game on. I'd be like, hey, man, is this normal? You'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's, it ain't even worth arguing about. Just, just take it for what it is and do what you do. And, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's just yeah. little stuff like that. Like, people who have done it before you or have done it better than you, nine times out of ten, they want to they, they wanna help you out. Even if it's yeah. not for you, if even if it just strokes their own ego, yeah. And 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 I know for me, one of the things that I think I I like so much more now is in the position that I'm in, like not having to deal with uh, exclusively just my family. Now, obviously, I've got so many. I've got a lot of brothers, right? And three of them are older than me. Plus, I've got my dad. So that's four older men in my life that I can go to, one of them married, obviously, my Taurus, the, probably the one that everybody knows the least, the, the one that stays the hell out of the way. But he's directly, he's closer to your, y'all are like the same. Taurus has turned 32 like four days ago. And so okay. he, on Easter was his birthday. He turned 32. And I was this year. But like we're two years apart. We're similar. Me, him, and Justice, we all grew kind of more so grew up because we're all so close in age. Yep. But point being, I learned things from my I learned things from him. But he's the married one. He's also been married now. This year, what would make this would make 10 years for him, which is fucking nuts. The more and more I think about it. No, 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 no. Not I'm sorry, eight years for 2015. But um point being, you know. I like going to my older brothers for advice. They know a lot. And um, and my dad as well. Like, these are people I can always confide in. I can always do whatever, like, whatever. But I also do like to get outside opinions outside of my family, too. I don't want to just kind of put myself in this bubble to where I'm only talking to people within my family. Like, I like to hear from other people, you know, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a big thing was always thinking that that was not something I could necessarily do, not because – it wasn't an option, but just more so of a, well, why would I need to type of thing more than anything? But that's the pride in it and saying, I don't need anyone else. I got, I got my brothers, I got my family, which is true to a degree. Like 
I don't, but like at the same time, it doesn't hurt to know the other side too. Like, you know what I mean? Like that doesn't hurt. And so I'm just closing myself off by doing that as if these motherfuckers, all they need is to go out to each other too. Nah, everybody has reached, has gone out from somebody and learned something from somebody to where they even got to the position of where I felt comfortable to even be able to talk to them or ask them a question. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things that it, it, it all culminates into this um, circle of people. Cause even a Jay Briggs, for instance, he's a fine example. Donis, my older brother, Donis, that's how I know Jay Briggs. I'm better friends with Jay Briggs than Donis is today, but like, that is still how I know Jay Briggs. I know Jay Briggs being my older brother because they were friends at Morehouse. house. So like, you know, that's how I know him though. But that's a part of, that's an extension of my brother. But I'm just saying there are so many different elements to life. And, and I think that we're foolish if we don't try and go into them. And I know we're going to have to wrap up. Uh, I don't know if you have any more thoughts on what we're talking about, but there were three quick hits I want to hit before the end because a ton of the NFL news just dropped. Right. Hey, yo, let's hit those three quick hits you got. All right, we're going to start off with this one. You know, we can give them a minute each. Uh, when asked if Dalvin Cook will be on the roster this season, Vikings GM Adolfo Mensa couldn't commit to it. Conversations are always ongoing with him. We're trying to be solution-oriented and always try to put the roster together with our constraints. So Dalvin Cook, and I know that a rumor came out earlier in the year. Um, about him potentially being on his cap is fourteen point one million dollars this upcoming off this upcoming season. Uh, he seems like he might be traded if there's a market for him. What are your thoughts? Uh, they should be more worried about their quarterback. I think that their front office is so smart that they're looking at value at position. When sometimes you have to take away the position and look at the player, and guess what? Dalvin Cook is a top three player at his position when healthy. Uh, he's healthy enough, and Kirk Cousins is your problem, not Dalvin Cook. Hendon Hooker, I saw, was a mock to go to them at like 22 or whatever number they're at. If you draft Hendon Hooker at 22. He's going to sit a whole year anyways. We know that. But then even if he comes that next year the after he redshirts, you could even still have Kirk Cousins one more year, even if you want it, because then him healthy could sit behind and you could bench him if things don't go well. Yeah, I, I look. I want us to draft Hendon Hooker in the second round. I don't know if he's gonna fall. Now I saw somebody had us getting Keely Ringo. Now, granted, I know we just got a. Uh, uh, what's the state out of Ohio? Okuda. Yeah, Okuda. Uh, so I don't know if that article was written before or after that trade. I know that trade was like two, three days ago, but uh, I did see a mock where we had Keely Ringo going to us in the second round, which you I know, don't know totally what that with, but like. I had some people talking to me about Jeff Okuda, and they were trying, and they were like, "Yeah, injuries have been his issue. It looked like to me. I just go for a fifth round pick. I loved it, bro. I thought it was a great trade. Yeah, if we gave up a three, I'm like, you. He played 15 games. Granted, one of the worst defenses in the league. They came around in the second half of the season. That defense got better, and he played. He started every game. He was damn near cornerback one for them. So like. I like it. He's 24. He's still a top former top three pick Ohio State guy. Give it to me all day for a fifth rounder. Yeah, please. Um, second story. Uh, Colts reportedly have Will Levis ahead of Anthony Richardson in their quarterback rankings. I, I, I You know what? I have bullshit yeah. over cow shit in my quarterback rank, in my shit rankings. Who cares, bro? It's shit. Well, and until we get to draft day, everything is just smoke, right? I, I don't care if it's smoke. I don't want Will Levis or Anthony Richardson to be my quarterback. So, and I'm not saying neither one can be successful because they both have raw talent. But I don't, I don't want them. So, well, and especially in those positions, uh, or in, in the Colts position, who do they sign? Gardner Minshew. Yeah, you are not trying Gardner Minshew out as your day one star. I don't give a fuck. That's like trying Marcus Mariota out to be your day one star. So, I, I don't, I don't. We are all here to do what Falcons do. Look at that. He's excited to be in Philly so that he could teach, apparently. But bro, you know uh, Bill Bill Simmons said by the end of the year that he would have that job. Who? He said Minchu would have beat uh Jalen out for that job by the end of the year. 
I'll be telling y'all, Simmons is lost his yeah. fuck. I can't listen to that nigga. Yeah, he used to be such a great writer, though. But, like, bad podcaster after he sold his network for $200 million. He was great with Grant Land. His writing, I used to love reading his shit on ESPN. I really did. What's your third one? Is it New Collins um, to the Jets? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Well, I, I mean, they miss out on Odell. I don't know where they're getting all this money from. I guess, who do they have that they paid? They don't really have anyone, I guess, that they paid. Not but really, they're going to fit Aaron Rodgers' $50 million contract. They're not – that they're, it's not going to be 50. Aaron's going to restructure. Well, he'd have to. Green Bay is going to, they're going to, Aaron's going to make Green Bay pay a shitload of his contract. And if they give it, him a one, which is what they're seeking, Nuke's probably going to get cut. So he's going to walk away with his guarantees and then he'll go to the Jets on the cheap. Because Nuke and Aaron is. Going to be very similar to Aaron and and uh, Devontae, a receiver who just catches the ball. He doesn't outrun everybody. He just he, he gets separation. He catches the ball. I I just look forward to seeing it because that's what Aaron needs. Like them young boys that they got out there, they're going to be great. They're going to do. They're you know they're going to get open. They're going to catch passes. But mm-hmm. on fourth and seven. When they're going for it, and they should probably be punting or kicking field goal. Aaron's going to throw it out to DeAndre Hopkins, and the whole stadium's going to know he's throwing it out to DeAndre Hopkins, and it's not going to matter. Right. Because nobody looks at anybody on that roster as someone who can just a fourth and seven, run a seven yard out. I'm going to throw it to, I'm going to throw it right at the, uh, at the stick. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna bring it in bounds, and if you don't catch it, he ran through your body and it's pi. It'll be interesting if they could go ahead and wrap him up. That's for sure. The Jets automatically—I mean, they're in the division with the Bills, but they turn into a if they if it's Rodgers and Hopkins along with what they have, and Brees can stay healthy, and obviously Garrett Wilson builds on his Rookie of the Year gear. I mean. And the defense can be good again. Like I, they'll be interesting. They're going to be on TV every day, though. They're going to be on TV more than Denver was last year, and it felt like Denver played a primetime game almost every other week. But oh, Aaron Rodgers is a better watch than Russell Wilson, even when Aaron Rodgers is bad, because Aaron Rodgers gives you facial expressions and and uh, give you a great post game interview. So you need him like high on fucking uh, the shot, <laughs> like afterwards talking about, yeah, we, you know, we, that whole No, story. Russ is going to give you, yeah, you know, we uh, we just didn't play hard enough today. You know, I, I didn't step up enough. You know, my offensive line, they blocked well, but, you know, they let a couple guys through on, on big third downs where I got sacked. Uh, but you know what? We're gonna come back, me and me and Sean. We're gonna work on a game plan, and uh, I, I promise you, man, we'll we'll be back next weekend. We're we're gonna we're gonna be great, you know. You know, go Broncos, yeah, Broncos country. Let's ride, right, Broncos country. Let's ride. Uh are we done? I think so. We're at three twenty. Pretty good show today, obviously. Shout out to Sean for coming through. Shout out to Sean and Sean. I text Sean and he was like, "Hey, bring me back more often." I was like, "Don't tempt me with a good time." Bring them in. I think that a perfect time would be maybe after the first round. Yeah. Once we get down to the elite eight of the NBA. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And if, and if not, definitely when, uh, when Embiid wins MVP. That too. But that's going to be announced relative. That They announce all that stuff typically within the first round. Ish. You remember Jokic won that they used one. To, well, because well, think about it. They used to do it to where they were presented before the game, and it was such a big deal. Yeah, then they then they tried to stretch it out, and then niggas started getting sent home and had to get their MVPs from Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but look, hey, it was it was fun, Parlay Pete. Hang out so we can do our recap clips that I got to remember to actually put out this time. I, okay, let's do it. I forgot last week. Oh, uh, yeah, great show. Fuck it. We are all here to do what Falcons do. Look at that. Yeah, so um, Paul AP, we had a pretty good show. We kind of did like a 
interview at first slash let's talk hoops mm-hmm. and the script that i tried to write out trashed it improvisation at its best um uh, then yeah no nah, it was it was improv it was fun i mean we talked we went from joel and b to luca versus trey Back to all NBA, and what do we? What else we got? Chloe, Chloe Bailey's uh, 10K record sales in the streaming era. The libs, business, OGs, mentors. I end up texting mentors, say, "Hey, dude, I appreciate what you do for me. Thank you." They just left it there. Yeah, I assume he's gonna assume that I'm drunk, and that's a fair assumption by the both of us. <laughs> well, it's eleven o'clock on a Thursday. And it's just like, well, that's a random thought, you know? And it's just right. like, no, I've just been thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you're thinking about me at 11 o'clock and not your wife and your kid. Yeah, you're drunk. Um, but that's kind of the recap there. I don't, I don't think there's much there's much left. We we did not recap some of the play-in games uh, because the right teams won. Well, we had two 10 seeds win for the first time. Granted, the play-in is a relatively new thing. What, this is year three of it? But the right teams won? For sure. For sure. I think Oklahoma's was a – I don't even know what to say about the Bulls. Here's the thing. The Bulls have the talent to beat the Raptors. Like, I don't think that was a no-brainer. The Bulls are just such underachievers, bro, to where – Yeah, great. I took them on points. But, uh, hey, hey, hey. They had them at six. I bought that point and a half, seven and a half. And the over, I was like, give it to me. Both hit. So – but uh, yeah. and then I I did I took New Orleans money line, but I took the Hawks oh, man, man. Line, took the Hawks money line, and then I took the uh, Timberwolves spread. So I was in terms of money line slash spread bets, I was three and one for the not a bad, opening. Not play. a bad day at the office. Yeah. So we'll be back with some more NBA. We're gonna be NBA. So here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna be NBA heavy uh, until the draft. Then we'll go draft heavy. Then we'll lean back into the NBA playoffs. Then after the finals is over, before we go real football heavy, we're going the, the pod's gonna get weird. More guests, uh, more random shows about more general conversation. Just general conversation. You yeah. yeah, you're gonna see more of what the locker room looks like. Uh, because we're we're gonna be bringing members of the locker members of the locker room in our extended friend group uh, to just talk shit. So uh, I hope you all are looking forward to that. And if you're not, well, um, unsubscribe. I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Because uh, <laughs> we're going to do it. Hit the road, Jack. All right, Parley Pete. What all are right. we going to talk about next week? Um, well, certainly we'll be in the thick of round one of the NBA playoffs. We'll probably be by about game three. Yeah. Game three for most teams will be three games in. So, Anyone that's uh, on sweep alert will already know. We'll know who's they're going to win their series. Um, the winner, every, let me see. The winner, we'll know, of, we'll know which series is the most intriguing. I'm sure that the NBA is never short of dramatic situations. So something dramatic is going to happen, whether there's a questionable call in a game that causes one game to go another way or an ejection of some sort that changes the complexion of a series. Anything can happen, but uh, we're definitely going to be hitting that. Uh, we will be, what, only one week away from the draft. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think we'll probably give the NFL a little bit more love because there will be some rumors worth talking about. Like, Right, because we'll, actually we'll be potting the the first night of the draft to Thursday. So yeah, we'll be potting that night. We'll be pretty live. Let me see. What time is the draft? Draft price starts at 8. Yeah, we'll, 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 I'll, I know I'll have the draft on either one computer or on another, on a split screen. And, and Mick Shea and Kuiper and Sheffy, all those guys, they're going to have their intel to where we're going to know who gets picked before they get picked, anyways. Or can I give you, can I give you a draft? Or the one, the one player, maybe Jalen Carter, the one player that is going to fall on everybody's, because it always happens every year. There's always one guy that falls so much like, you know, where it's a Laramie Tunzel type of situation and he's got a gas to eight. Glaring, like just glaring in front of everybody. 
and he goes from being a top five pick to like 13th or something. Jalen Carter to eight, but I don't think he gets past Pete Carroll. I think Seattle takes him too. I don't see how he falls past them. And now Detroit's even interesting, even though the thought is now that Detroit's going to go corner, that I guess kind of would be a little bit of the thought, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule Detroit out either. Um, can I give you my, uh, uh, a quick draft take? Go for it. D'Amico Ryan's trades back. That's a super hot take to think that they're either that, or you're saying that they want a quarterback, a different quarterback. If Bryce Young isn't isn't there at two, I don't think they love C.J. Stroud enough. I've T. Leaves I've been reading, and D'Amico Ryan's a six year contract, so he can suck it up next year, and wait for Caleb. for Caleb Williams or Drake May. And you've watched both of them. Is C.J. Stroud better than Drake May? No. I don't know, man. I saw C.J. Stroud against Georgia. And you saw C.J. Stroud with Ohio State players. Not that's true, players. but, I mean, he's got Mechie, uh, who the assumption, let's just assume that he's healthy and is as good as advertised. That's a guy that fell to them in the second round that was a top 15 talent. Uh, they mm-hmm. traded Cooks, right? Cooks got traded to Dallas. So yeah. uh, who else do they have at receiver? Who was their top guy this year? I guess it was Cooks. Um yeah. Uh, well, then if they trade back, the assumption would be maybe they take a receiver. I don't. I mean, I, to set it up. I don't. That, I don't know what they take. I just think they 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 get some more draft picks and they trade back because that roster needs a lot more. And Davis Mills is not terrible. He's not a franchise quarterback, but I don't know if anyone in this draft is a franchise quarterback. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that. But next week we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about the Lakers being up two one. In LA Warriors being down, Warriors being down one two. Can they come back? Philly, how did you not sweep the Nets? Why are you up only up two one? Because um, Mikael Bridges is gonna have one of those crazy games because Philly traded him. He's gonna go off for like thirty eight. He's from Philly and went to Villanova. Exactly. Um, the Hawks are going to be down 3-0. They'll win game four just because it's they got to win game four. But Well, and the league wants to stretch that thing out as far as they can. Actually, I'll give you my hot take. Give me your hot take. That the Hawks take it six. Bro, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know how hot of a take that actually is. It's pretty fucking hot. <laughs> because we, we, we struggle with Boston in general. Similarly, to, though, to how they struggle with the Heat, and then they go in there and they whoop their ass like they were up the entire game. Um, got Quinn Snyder, new sheriff in town. I and I think that that makes a difference. Oddly enough, I mean, I'm not saying I, that, I'm not saying that. Uh, hey, I'm about to piss myself. You got anything else? No, just there. There's my hot take for next week. But we'll get. Well, I guess when we get there, we'll revisit this. All right. So yeah, here here's our. What we think we're going to talk about next week, uh, our NBA predictions and some draft predictions. And guess what? We'll be here with you guys live for the draft while we're doing a regular show that's going to get totally hijacked by the draft. So be ready for a show that's all over the place. Thanks, Parlay Pete. Thanks, Sean Daly. Uh, I'll see you next week. Let's get it done. All right, Doc. All right, brother.